What's happening, Charleston Catholic High School? It's Mr. Flood. You guys remember me, right? I was only there like two and a half weeks ago. It's okay if you don't. I really don't care if you remember me. I care, I care more if you remember what I said. One thing, like a half a thing that I said. I'm not worried about if you remember me. I hope you remember what I said because I um, I feel really strongly about what I talk about. So it's, so it's Mr. Flood. I'm coming back with this video for two reasons. Number one is to say thank you for the way that you treated me. Three reasons, really. Um, you treated me so well when I was there. I felt so comfortable, Charleston. Uh, you know, everybody there was so kind to me. Uh, the staff and the students. It's always awesome to be in a Catholic school where I got my education. Um, so thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the way that you treated me. Uh, I'm grateful for that. I truly am. And the second reason I'm coming back, and then I'll tell you the third reason at the end. The second reason I came back with this video is to remind you of the challenges I gave you when I was there. You know, three simple little things that are so important that can have a profound impact on your life and more importantly, on the lives of people around you. So the first challenge was to look on the inside of people. Do not judge. You know, do not judge. Judge not lest ye be judged. You know, it's all over the Bible. It's all over what you study, what you guys and girls study in theology. Um, look on the inside of people. I, everyone has a better nature. And when you don't judge them, I guarantee you they will not judge you. So look on the inside. Second challenge I gave you was to reach out, show respect, and say thank you to two adults in your building, in your middle school career, in your high school career, in your in all of your careers, you're always going to need people to go to. And when you're, a, when you're a child, when you're a young adult, 11 to 17, 18, it should be an adult. It's great to talk to friends, but it should be an adult that's trusted, who can give you some perspective, who's possibly been through what you've been through, or if not the same thing, has been through something similar with the same feelings that they can identify with you. Uh, and what you're going through. So the way to connect and bond with an adult is to first say thank you to them for caring about you and for working in education, no matter what they do. Counselor, teacher, custodian, bus driver, secretary, lunch, anybody who works in a school is worthy of, of, a, of, a, of a thank you and a look in the eye for nine seconds. Third challenge I gave you was to not let anyone eat alone. And I would, I would implore you to take this challenge wherever you can, in school, out of school, on the bus, in the hallway, in the classroom, in the cafeteria, anywhere where you can include others in those unsupervised social times where people who are introverted or atypical or, you know, struggle with, with, you know, social connection, anywhere where you can make those people feel more comfortable and include them. And I'm, you 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 could save someone's life. You really could. It's that I know that sounds extreme, but it's true. You really could have a huge impact and save someone's life from just you know that life of quiet desperation that a lot of people end up leading. And we as Catholics have such an ob a huge obligation to reach out and be Christ-like for others. So make sure you do those things. Look on the inside. Say thank you to two teachers, and no one eats alone. Two adults, not just two teachers. And the third, the, the third, re all right, so here it is. I got stuck in Charleston. My flight was canceled. I actually, so my flight was canceled and they put me on another flight and I was on the plane and I was the last one to get on because I was like an extra passenger and I had a seat and everything. And right before the plane closed up the door, to taxi. It was the last flight that left Charleston that night at like, I'm going to say maybe seven o'clock, seven thirty. It might be a little bit later. No, it was about six. I'm sorry. It was about six thirty. They made an announcement that there's a weight restriction on the plane and they had to take one passenger off the plane. Who was the last one on the plane? Mr. Flood. They took me off the plane. First of all, the flight attendant hugged me. It was a lovely woman. I should have got her name. And I said, you know what, it's okay. And they took me off the plane. They took my bag off the plane. And I went back into the airport. And there were no more flights. So I rented a car at the airport. It would be a one-way rental to drive home to New York. I drove four hours from 7 to 11 o'clock at night through the mountains of West Virginia. 
I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. That might not have been the smartest thing to do. I drove about 45 miles an hour. I drove into Maryland. I got a room at 11 o'clock at night. I slept till five and I got up and I drove another six or seven hours to get home. So it took me 11 hours to get home. I love Charleston, but I didn't love that ride. Guys and girls, you never know what kind of a position you're going to be put in. Um, traveling as a youth speaker is wonderful, but every now and then things like that come up. So I will hold good memories of my time with you. I will not hold good memories of my time at the uh, uh, Yeager, Chuck Yeager Airport in Charleston, West Virginia. But I know planes don't take off because of safety and everything like that. But it was a bummer to be on a plane and then get taken off. So hope none of you ever have to experience that, even though some I know that some of you probably will as you get older. Have a great day, guys and girls. I'll be thinking of you. I hope I get a chance to run into you someday. In the nice weather, like in the summer, I'll come to West Virginia. Have a great day.